Joining us right now to talk a little bit more about this and other related issues to coronavirus right now is Dr. Uh, Sika Jane. She's with the University of Illinois at Chicago. Dr. Jane, um, let's start first with uh, a report. According to a study in the Journal of the American Medical Association, people who got the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, they started developing antibodies against COVID by day eight, apparently. So if you wouldn't mind, please explain to people who are getting vaccinated with the J&J &J shot what this means for them. Absolutely. So when you get the vaccine, your body starts making antibodies. And the question is, how long does it take to make those antibodies? And then how long is it when you have enough antibodies to be protected? So this study showed that you do start making those antibodies around eight days, but that does not mean that you are completely protected. So those great numbers that we're looking at, how well the vaccine protects you, we don't start seeing that until about 14 days. So while your body has started to mount an immune response and has some level of protection, I want to remind people that it takes at least about two weeks for you to start seeing the levels of protection that we've reported overall. So just because you got the vaccine and you've got antibodies eight days later does not mean you are completely protected and you still need to be very cautious until you reach that two week mark. Oh, all right. Well, you know, I want to talk next about an analysis from Israel's Ministry of Health. They find that the Pfizer vaccine prevents asymptomatic COVID-19 and death. And this is significant because we haven't been sure if people who have been vaccinated could still be asymptomatic carriers. Can you maybe explain what this means? So if you remember earlier in the pandemic, we were very concerned because people who were asymptomatic, meaning they never had symptoms, but they did have COVID-19, were spreading the disease without ever knowing that they were spreading the disease. And so one of the concerns that we had was even if you're vaccinated, could you develop COVID-19 and just not have any symptoms and still be spreading the disease? So now it's looking like with the study that this vaccine actually prevents not just the symptomatic and the very sick uh, patients with COVID-19, but it also seems to be preventing that asymptomatic uh, infection. So it looks like this vaccine is actually helpful not only in preventing yourself from getting sick, but also in preventing you from spreading COVID-19 to other people because you won't develop an asymptomatic infection. Mm, okay, well, let's talk about this a AstraZeneca vaccine. It's not approved here in the United States, but there are a lot of European countries. They are using it. And now there are fears of possible blood clots related to the vaccine. We were just talking about Thailand this morning. Have you heard anything about this? Is, is this why the United States is holding off on that kind of approval? So I don't think that's why the United States is holding off. Um, and I also want to make sure that people know the WHO actually came out saying that there is currently no direct link that has been found between these blood clots and the AstraZeneca vaccine. It's important to note that only a handful of people have developed blood clots after getting this vaccine. And they're saying the numbers of people who develop blood clots are very similar to what we would normally see in the population. Millions of people have gotten this vaccine and they have not had blood clots. Millions of people have gotten this vaccine and it's prevented them from getting very ill. I think a lot of the countries that are suspending giving it, they have other options for other vaccines. So that's why they're suspending it until more evidence and more research has been done. But as of now, it does not look like there is a direct link between the AstraZeneca vaccine and these blood clot incidents that we've seen. Mm. OK, so we heard from President Biden last night and he says we should be able to gather in groups by the 4th of July. He also says he wants every American to be able to get vaccinated by May or at least make some appointments by May. Um, so do you think this summer is going to go back to normal in Chicago? What are your thoughts on that? I think it's going to be a hybrid of 2020 and 2019. I think we're going to continue be, to be seeing masks. And remember, just because the vaccine is available to everyone doesn't mean everyone can actually get it. So there's a supply issue. We need to make sure we're getting the supply here. Then when we get the supply, we need to make sure people can actually get the appointments to get the vaccines in arms. And then once eventually supply outpaces demand, we need to make sure that enough people have gotten vaccinated that we've reached that herd immunity level. So there's still a lot of steps that need to happen in order for us to get back to a complete normal. I also think it's important to remember there's these new variants that are going around. So how we behave in the next couple of months is going to be really key. 
We need to do things like not going out and partying in large groups for St. Patrick's Day so that we can continue to control the spread of the virus and prevent these, uh, these variants from getting out of control. Because if they get out of control, then this summer is going to look a lot more similar to 2020 than 2019. And we don't want that. We want to be able to go out and enjoy the Chicago summer. So let's keep being safe and let's keep wearing our masks and not going to those large gatherings until we get this really under control so we can have a fun summer. All right, Dr. Jane with the University of Chicago. Thanks so much for joining us on this Friday morning. Thanks for having me.